Hey everyone, it's Victor here, and today I'm going to be answering more of your questions. I made another post on Instagram asking people what they wanted to ask me, and we got quite a few questions this time. I'm sorry if I missed yours out, I'm trying to cover as many as I can, but I usually babble for way too long and then the video becomes feature length, and that's not so good for YouTube. You may have noticed as well that my hair is blonde again. Surprise, surprise. I missed it too much, and I'm afraid I'm going to be blonde for the rest of my life now because I love it and I just couldn't go back to brown I just felt so boring I needed exciting hair so blonde it is I hope I can be blonde Victor for as long as possible I don't care that I have to keep dyeing my roots every couple of weeks I mean I care a little bit it's inconvenient but I'm just going to do it anyway but anyway let's bring on the questions first question is why do I cosplay? I think I cosplay because I love acting, I love bringing characters to life and my acting is the kind of passion that really drives me as well as creating my costumes. I mean I haven't done very many armor builds but I really enjoy making armor and things like that. Complicated cosplay, I'm trying to do it more because I love that creative process so I think making the costumes as accurate as possible and bringing characters to life is why I cosplay. To answer the second question within that first question is yes. Me and Alex uh, often talk about moving in together, although we're not sure exactly where yet in the world. Um, the world's big. The world's big place. If you've ever looked out your window, it's quite large. Uh, so we're not sure yet. Um, but he does like, you know, Scotland. He likes the look of Scotland, so we're not sure if he wants to live in Scotland yet or if we want to look somewhere else. But yeah, eventually we hope to move in together, so yes. The reason I wanted to start a YouTube channel was because I wanted a platform for my filmmaking, because I've always been a filmmaker since I was... Well, I kind of started seriously when I was about 16, but I always had cameras around me and I was making short films and editing them of me with my horses or just random, like, crazy videos of me when I was a kid. But I wanted to become more professional in my filmmaking and I didn't really have a platform at that time and I was a bit nervous to kind of go out there so I thought well YouTube's a nice starter I can make my films put them out there people can appreciate them if they want I mean I wasn't sure if anyone was going to watch them it was more just somewhere to put my films where I could appreciate them and you know put them out in public and hopefully people would like them and so yeah and, and I think I wanted to entertain people as well I've always been a kind of entertainer even in primary school I would try to entertain people and do things like that. Um, so I've always been a kind of funny joker type person. I've wanted to bring that to the screen in my acting. So that's another reason why. It's because I wanted to perform. But yeah, mostly a, a platform. And YouTube's a great platform uh, for your films. So yeah, that's why I started a YouTube channel. Well... Hmm. That can be a tough one, uh, because I can get pretty down. I mean, I suffer from depressive episodes, uh, which I'm, I'm actually getting better at. It's not a big thing in my, it's not a big thing in my life as it has been. I think what motivates me is my kind of dreams, and I, I sort of look back and I realize why I'm doing this and what I love about the world, and you know, all the things I'm thankful for. I just think about what I'm thankful for, and that usually lifts me up. You know, if you remember the things that you love, you know, that, that always brings me back, you know, even from a very low, low. I just think, well, why am I doing this? It's because this is my dream and I want to build my channel and hopefully become a filmmaker. And, you know, that's, I just, I just think of the, the big picture. That's what motivates me. Okay, that's a really hard one, because you know me and fictional characters. I mean, I basically, that's what I do. I become fictional characters. Who would I become? Ooh. That is a, that is a really tough one, let me think. Peter Pan? Maybe? I don't know. Peter Pan would be cool. Uh, Loki, even though he's troubled. I'd like to be Loki. Oh, 
God, what am I talking about? Dorian, Dorian Parvus from Dragon Age Inquisition. Obviously I'd become Dorian if I could. Yeah, okay, Dorian. Sorry, that took me so long. I don't know why that took me so long. Ooh, oh, so many to choose from again. See, when I'm under pressure, I'm not very good at making like decisions. So if you were like, what superpower do you want? I'd be like, can you give me more time to think? Is that a superpower you can give me? Actually, I think the power to make people happy. Like just to, to like shoot a kind of like light at someone and they're just happy. Oh, I would love to do that. Can that be a superpower? Yeah, just like instant happiness. And you can use it on yourself as well. Just like, woo. That would be, oh yeah. The power to make people happy. Although, I guess I'm trying to do that in my channel. It's not exactly a superpower though. Um, but yeah, if it was just like a kind of shoot something out of your hand kind of superpower, making people happy would be so cool. That's a nice question. My day has been quite good actually. I've been working on uh, some cosplay, been hanging around. I'm gonna tone my hair a bit more natural blonde because it's a bit more, it's a bit bleachy at the moment. So I'm gonna tone it later. Um, my day has been all right, it's been raining. Um, which is kind of normal, really. Although it's been very sunny recently because obviously it's meant to be spring. <laughs> but yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a nice day. Quite nice. I had some dark chocolate. I watched Sherlock Holmes. That was on my break, of course. I haven't been doing that all day. Uh, but yeah, mostly been gluing things to certain cosplays. But yes. Uh, and how's your day been? I know you can't answer me back, but I hope your day's been good. Who? Weapon of choice. Mm. Well, when I play as characters in games, I usually choose to be a mage or uh, like a rogue archer. I like far away weapons. <laughs> I like weapons that mean I can stay well out of danger, but, you know, do away with the bad guys. I prefer to be sneaky and not get up and close. I'm not really a warrior type. I'm not really a kind of like, ah, great sword type, you know, person. I mean, that, that's sort of like scary for me, so I prefer to be like, you know, in the shadows, like shooting arrows, spells and stuff, so... Staff? My weapon of choice is staff. Yeah, I'll go for that. Well, the cosplay community can be a lovely place full of lovely people, uh, and I've experienced some of those lovely people, but equally... Yeah, it, equally it can be quite a negative and competitive place. I think my least favourite thing is the competition and the judgmental attitude of some people. You know, like people saying like, oh, you haven't got that right, therefore you are rubbish. You know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, oh, your eyebrows are slightly too large, for example. Or, you know, someone saying, like, your skin colour is the wrong skin colour. I mean, that's when it gets ridiculous. But people that get so hung up on little details that it becomes very damaging to people. That's what I really don't like. So I, I hate the kind of body shaming and race, like, racism. That is terrible. Um, and also, like, yeah, people saying, like, oh, you're too short to cosplay this person. Or you're too skinny. Or you're too fat. Or, like, you haven't got enough muscle. You know, those are the worst. That's what I hate about the cosplay community is that people can be so, like, particular um, that it actually becomes damaging. I mean, fair enough if you want to give people tips, great, but don't go like, by the way, you have to lose like 10 pounds before you can cosplay them because that's what they look like. You know, that makes you a horrible person. That's basically you bullying someone. You know, I've talked about bullying before. Just don't do it. My favorite part of the cosplay community is the laughs that you have, especially at conventions. When everyone comes together and everyone's wonderful and positive and they're like, I love your cosplay and you're taking videos and photos together and you're all just having a laugh and you all appreciate each other's cosplay and characters. That's what I love about the cosplay community. I absolutely love it. I prefer the cosplay community in person than I do online. Online, it can be so damaging and weird. Like, it feels weird online sometimes. People are just like, Oh, I don't want to like your photo because then people will think I'm connected to you and, you know, you haven't got enough followers yet, so... <laughs> There's a lot of bitchiness that goes on, especially about follower counts. Oh, I hate that. I hate the whole thing with follower counts. Like, 
it's just people that have found you. Yes, you may be amazing at cosplay, but other people who have lower amounts of followers are also great at cosplay. Okay? Yeah. Good. Sorry, I almost had a rant there. Well, I'm a Slytherin. Uh, Slytherin and proud. I am very pleased that I was put into that house. Some people f are surprised when they find out I'm a Slytherin because they're like, you're too nice to be a Slytherin. And I'm like, really? I find that very unfair. I feel like Slytherins can be perfectly nice and reasonable people. Yes, there's been a few bad ones, but I mean, come on. You know, you can't just judge a few people like, and judge the whole uh, lot of them. You know, so I'm a proud Slytherin. 100%. Who would I cosplay from Harry Potter? Well, I really want to cosplay Gilderoy, clearly. My uncle, of course. Um, good old Uncle Gildy. But yeah, um, I want to cosplay him, 100%. I mean, I very quickly cos cosplayed Fred, from, uh, Fred and George uh, duo. Um, I could have been George, but I think I'm more suited to Fred. So I did that on my Instagram, like, one day, and that was quite fun. Um, Lucius. I want to cosplay Lucius, Lucius Malfoy. Draco Malfoy, definitely. Sirius Black, of course. Oh gosh, there's so many. So many characters I want to cosplay from Harry Potter. I don't think I had enough time for all of them. But I think Gilderoy is going to be one of my first ones, most definitely. Panic. Panic at the Disco. Yeah, I've stuck with them so much longer. I mean, I love Fallout Boy, but I listen to Panic way more than Fallout Boy. So yeah, Panic at the Disco. It's more feeling like you're restricted, like you're trying to be yourself, but there's things you have to do in order to be yourself, to feel like yourself. You have to bind or pack and things like that. Um, so it's like feeling like there's extra effort to put in to kind of being yourself. Your body is still your body. You just have things that need a bit of tweaking. But when they're not tweaked, yeah, they're hard to deal with every day. I mean, it's hard to admit that they're there, you know? But I don't think it should take away from your identity. I mean, just having a different kind of body doesn't mean that you're less of a man or less of a woman or less non-binary. It just is the body you have. It doesn't make you like that gender. Just because you have one thing or you have another thing or you have a mix of the two, it doesn't really change who you are. And that's always what I tell myself if I'm experiencing dysphoria, is I'm just as valid as anyone else. So yeah, dysphoria is hard, but you know, there's there's help out there for it. There's things you can do. And overall, just remember you are truly and And overall, just remember that you are valid and true as yourself. And body parts don't mean anything at the end of the day. Actually great. I actually answered this person on Instagram because I had to enlighten them that I actually am not non-binary, I am trans male. Uh, but I want to answer this question because I feel like it's important. If you're non-binary, you're completely valid. And I understand why you'd be going, what have everyone saying I'm mad and this isn't a real thing? But those people just don't understand the issues. You feel what you feel for a reason, and that's because non-binary people exist and always have. They just haven't had a way to express it in the past. Non-binary people have existed for as long as humans have. It's a completely normal thing, it's just that we finally have a word to describe it. There's been gender variance in people for so long, and those people have just been repressed. And now we're not repressed, now people are coming out of their shells, now people are using these labels to describe themselves and who they are. Before they would just be unhappy women or unhappy men, and that's what the world would see them as. But they would still be non-binary. This is the thing that people can't quite grasp. They think, oh, this is a new thing. This, this like, hasn't been around for very long. I mean, you know, <laughs> this is obviously not real. But it is, because basically the world's becoming a freer place, and that's why people are expressing themselves more. It's not because this hasn't existed. It's just because life in the past was very unfair for many people, not just non-binary people. I mean, if you look back to women's rights, it was totally crap. And yeah, it still needs work. 
But you know, that's what life is. It, it changes, it gets better for people who are repressed. So, yeah, I understand why you have that feeling, because that's what people are telling you. They're just like, oh, no, it doesn't exist. But it's just because they're not willing to look at the facts and look at all these people who are clearly non-binary. They're just ignoring them. So try to remember that non-binary people have always been around. They've just been silent. They've just been quiet. But you don't need to be quiet now. You can be yourself. Well, I learned how to edit through trial and error when I was very young on Windows Movie Maker with very old camcorders. That was a fun time. Basically, cutting and sticking pieces of footage together. That's how I learned. Just get a simple edit program. Something really simple. I don't know if Windows Movie Maker is still a thing. It's probably not. But I'm sure there's free editing software that you could find. It may be that some people need a bit of teaching. For me, I prefer to learn things on my own and under my own steam. I don't like really being told what to do and how to do it. I prefer to just make it up as I go along and learn from my mistakes. But other people may learn a different way. So I would just say go for it. If you want to maybe find a friend who's edited before and they could maybe help you, you know, teach you the basics. Uh, but other than that, just just go for it. You'll, your mind will get into the, the kind of groove of it and you'll have fun. I mean, I actually love editing. It's like one of my favorite things to do. So enjoy it when you try it. Oh, are you going to buy me some? That would be nice. Uh, favorite flowers? Who? Gosh. Oh, probably roses. I love roses. Can never go wrong with roses. Uh, they have to be scented roses though. Unscented roses? Flowers are meant to be scented. They're meant to smell beautiful as well as look beautiful. I mean, that's awful. I'm putting rules on flowers, but still. Scented roses. Like wild roses. Oh, they're beautiful. Yes, those are my favorite. Oh gosh, there's so many animals I adore. I would love to have an elephant. Elephants are beautiful creatures. They're so gentle and amazing. I mean, they're huge. I'd never be able to put one here, but if I had like a huge elephant house, <laughs> I would love that. Um, yeah, an elephant, uh, definitely. I can think of anything else. I think maybe a sea lion. I love sea lions as well. I actually wanted to be a sea lion trainer at one point in my life. I was like, I love them. They're, they're lovely. I mean, obviously all the money in the world. So I'd have like a huge, huge tank for them. I wouldn't want them in a tiny place. I wouldn't want my elephant in a tiny place either. I'd want huge expanse of grounds to kind of, you know, wander around with them. But yeah, I think elephant or sea lion or both. In five years, I would love to be doing Shakespeare. I want to do more Shakespeare, I want to act. Uh, obviously, after my transition has gone through, um, if that's the term, uh, when my transition is further down the line, I'll be doing much more acting. So I think acting Shakespeare would be fantastic in terms of career. Marriage, I mean, Alex, if you'll have me. <laughs> uh, possibly. I mean, I don't want to predict anything. But yeah, I mean, that would be great. Kids? Hmm. Not so much. I don't really think I'm suited to have children. I don't think I'd want to adopt children. I don't think Alex would want to adopt children either. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about it. I'm, I'm, I mean, I've never really thought about children very much. You know, I've never really thought about, about that. So I can't say for sure, really. I mean, I think bleh, things change. Right now, no. Other career things, I mean, I'd like to have a house. I'd like to have somewhere of my own, like a big place. Um, making films, bigger budget films, that would be fantastic. Uh, working with my horses more, having more time to do that, I would love that. But yeah, I think overall, just, just having fun. I mean, doing more of the same, really. Of course, I'm always up for drinking tea. Just come around to my house, we'll drink tea all day and talk about life. I can't think of anything better. Well, at first it was with difficulty. Uh, and at first I was trying to get them to use they, them pronouns, uh, which was even more difficult for them because they weren't really familiar with the whole genderqueer identity. But obviously now I want them to use he, he, him. So that's actually been more difficult because they're used to using they, them now. So it's been a bit of a kind of 
they haven't really got, you know, they haven't really started using he, him. They're still using they, so um, it might be a while before they change. It's a difficult one though, because it's just, it's just a lot of practice and it's them letting go of years of like muscle memory. You know, you end up just saying things because you're used to saying them. It's not that you're trying to offend people most of the time. I mean, my parents care very much about me. They don't want to offend me. So if they ever slip, it's not because they're being horrible. It's because they have memories of what they should say about me and who I am as a person. But they're trying. So I think just time. You have to give your parents time. It can be very difficult, though. Well... I mean, I'm probably not the best person to give advice because I end up taking forever to make my cosplays. But planning them, I think you should basically break down the costume. Break down it into individual pieces. Just go like, you know, this bit I can make individually, that bit I can make individually, then I stick them together, that kind of thing. Don't go crazy and think like, oh god, there's this whole outfit that I have to make, I'll never do it. You know, don't, don't scare yourself like that. Just break it down into manageable pieces. I think that's very important with any cosplay. I mean, it can be a simple cosplay that's not got any armor and think that that's just pieces of clothing. But just break it down. Don't just look at the entire outfit. Look at the parts of the outfit or the kind of wig you need to get. That kind of thing. D don't, don't look at it as a whole. Look at it in pieces. That's probably the best advice I can give any person that's planning a cosplay. Now, I have probably gone way over time and rambled far too much, but I think... Those are all the questions I can answer today. Thank you so much for sending them in. I've had a lot of fun answering them. I will try to get round to the other ones that I've missed in my next couple of videos, I promise. I, I'm trying my best to make sure I can do all of your questions because I hate leaving people out and it's usually because I just talk too much. But anyway, if you have any other questions for me that you want me to answer in other videos, leave them in the comments and I will get round to them. It's always very interesting hearing what people want to ask me, and some of them are getting sillier and sillier, which I love. Uh, so if you have any silly questions, go ahead and bring them to me. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.